Wow, we've discovered something incredibly exciting on Pluto that even makes extraterrestrial life seem possible. Be sure to stay tuned to the end to see the spectacular original footage of the small dwarf planet. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this exciting topic to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Poor little Pluto. I can't stop thinking about how it was kicked out of the Planet Club in 2006 and demoted to dwarf planet status. Let's clarify the mood right at the beginning. Was it right to kick Pluto out and make it a dwarf planet? Or do you disagree with the decision? Feel free to write your opinions and arguments in the comments. I'm super excited to see what the majority think. This fateful year of 2006 also saw the start of the mission to which we owe almost all our images and knowledge of Pluto, New Horizons. A groundbreaking NASA expedition to the outer edge of the solar system aimed at exploring Pluto and its moons in more detail. Of course, a journey to such a distant world is no child's play. The distance from Earth to Pluto is several billion kilometers and the space probe had to travel more than nine years to reach Pluto. It finally reached it in 2015 and provided us with the first beautiful high-resolution image of the dwarf planet that you can see here. New Horizons approached Pluto at only 12,500 kilometers, and it is equipped with a variety of scientific instruments, camera, spectrometer, detectors for particles and radiation, and so on. These instruments have allowed us to take detailed images of Pluto and its moons, which in turn has enabled us to analyze the surface structure and composition of this distant world. And this is still the case today. New Horizons produced such a massive amount of data that scientists are still sitting at it today, examining and dissecting it all. One of the most exciting findings was that there are cryovolcanoes on Pluto, volcanoes that do not spew lava, but water. This means that there must be huge deposits of ice beneath the surface of Pluto which melt and then shoot out of the ice volcanoes in liquid form. So for a nerd like me who is interested in space and volcanoes, this is the perfect topic. I could really chat about it 24-7. Small talk with me at parties is a bit exhausting, I admit. But many questions about these plutonic volcanoes were still unanswered. Are they still active? Are they connected to each other? What energy source feeds them and how massive would an eruption be? I have good news. We now have answers to most of these questions. A team of researchers from the NASA Ames Research Center has taken a close look at the New Horizons data on the Kaladze crater on Pluto. This is how they describe the region. There are no other areas on Pluto that look like this region. It is completely unique in the entire solar system. And what they found out about this crater is truly incredible. Brace yourselves. The Kaladze Crater is a supervolcano, a volcano the size of Yellowstone in the USA, but on a distant dwarf planet on the edge of the system. Absolutely crazy. The researcher involved, Dale Cruikshank, says, We postulate that Kaladze Crater is a supervolcano that, in one or more explosive eruptions, has delivered more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of icy cryomagma from the dwarf planet's interior. So imagine Yellowstone were to erupt. Here you can see the estimated death zone of a maximum eruption, but instead of hot lava, it would spread a mixture of water ice, ammonia, and methane across North America. And now imagine that this doesn't happen on Earth, but on a mysterious world at the edge of the solar system. Who says science is boring? The researchers were able to identify the remnants of these eruptions on the surface of Pluto because the average temperature on Pluto is a not so pleasant minus 232 degrees Celsius. So muddy eruptions simply retain their shape on the surface of the dwarf planet. The cryomagma is shot out and then freezes solid for all eternity. This is how researcher Kelsey Singer describes it. The icy material was probably more of a slushy mixture of ice and water, or similar to toothpaste, as it flowed out of a volcanic vent onto the surface of Pluto. It is therefore so cold on the surface of Pluto that liquid water obviously cannot remain liquid there for long. The flow of material from these eruptions formed these massive domes that we see on the surface, like the undulating terrain that can be found throughout this region. And here's the thing, 
These volcanoes are probably still active. I can already hear some of you crying out in anger. How do you know that? I don't believe a word you say, Tim. The researchers found out by intensively studying the area around the Kaladzi supervolcano, there are none of the impact craters that normally dot the surface of Pluto, indicating that an eruption took place here only a short time ago. By cosmic standards, the slush ice from which then smoothed the surrounding area. If this were not the case, we would see many more craters. The research team estimates that the last major volcanic eruption took place 100 to 200 million years ago. Geologically speaking, that's not that long ago. Does the word geological even make sense when talking about processes on Pluto? Or should we then say Pluto-logical? And given the relatively recent activity of the ice volcanoes, it is entirely possible that they will erupt again in the future. In other words, we are now relatively certain that there are active ice supervolcanoes on Pluto, which periodically coat the surface with water, ammonia, and methane, a pretty good mixture for life. Of course, this life could not exist for long on the surface, but underground, in warm caves fed by the energy of the volcanic system, absolutely possible. And as bizarre as it sounds, Pluto is now considered by many researchers to be one of the most likely places for extraterrestrial life in the solar system. I once asked the AI what such a cave Pluto alien might look like, and I'm very pleased with the result. Feel free to write in the comments what we should call this life form. I'll just throw Cryo Flauschi out there as a name suggestion but I'm really looking forward to your suggestions. Where the heat for these cryovolcanoes comes from is not entirely clear. In the case of Saturn's and Jupiter's moons, it is due to the tidal forces of the gas planets that heat up the small moons. In the case of Pluto, we do have tidal forces from its moon Charon, but these alone cannot be sufficient. Radioactive decay processes in Pluto's interior probably also play a role, but this remains a big mystery for the time being. However, it is now certain that we have active ice volcanoes and therefore presumably still have large underground water sources on the dwarf planet. So once again, the old adage applies, small but mighty. That's what she said. <laughs> My YouTube channel is no longer small, but we still want to grow. And I would be delighted if you could help me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. It's absolutely free. You'll help me immensely, and you'll never miss another galactic video again. Thank you, guys. The next mission to Pluto could go much faster. Because we have discovered a cosmic highway that runs through our solar system. Sounds incredible, I know, but it's really true. You can find out what this highway looks like and who is driving on it in the video below. Be sure to take a look. It's very exciting and if you come to my astro shop at high speed, I'll have some special surprises for you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.